Hey, BB, why do you look so sad? Why well, he says, oh, time to do some stretches. That's why stretches always make me feel good too. Good boy. Breakfast time for the kitties. Get the camera out. Pumpkin's gotta run away. Where are you going, Pumpkin? Why are you hiding? Why are you always hiding from the camera? You wanna play games? You wanna play games? No? She's hyper this morning. All right, Pumpkin, I'll leave you alone. Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, look. Cloudy day, not normally something we celebrate, but it's so much better for getting good shots of plants. You do a garden tour, Turbo? Almost all the pets are here. Toby's upstairs sleeping. Sorry, I know Toby's not around much anymore. He likes to sleep. 12 year old dog. It's what they do. It's terrariums. Haven't shown these in a while. Not really gonna show much of them because the glasses. Oh, the glass is dirty. Can't really see much. Power palms in there. Syngoniums over there. It's an aquatic one. Here's the desert style one that got thrown together sometime last winter. Need to put my phone on silent. My apologies. And the most recent terrarium with her, Mudman, holding the begonia with some more power palms, some syngoniums, oxalis that I pulled up from the garden. These are all, probably really can't see much of any of this because of all the glare. This has been doing well, not holding the moisture in quite as well as I would like, and I think that's because I have such a wide rim here with the lava rock. So I'm gonna figure something out there to help hold in some more moisture. I haven't had to water it and it's been two weeks, so I'm gonna say that that's, that's okay. it's doing all right. Not a big deal, just need to improve on the moisture retention some. Oh, and how about the view? Look at it. Isn't it glorious? The banana can is towering up through this window and then got the gingers over here, which were looking great until a few days ago when their flowers were open, hummingbirds and butterflies and bees were all over the place outside this window. And it's okay, we're gonna have a lot more flowers coming up here soon. Got lots of growth on them, so there's gonna be more. We'll talk about that. Let's go outside and talk more about the plants. This is, it's gonna be a long one. I realized, and by I realized, I mean it's been brought to my attention that I have not been great about remembering to talk about the house plants during the garden tours. So in this video, I'm going to make sure to cover the house plants, which is going to make it much, much longer because I haven't talked about them in a while, so there's more to update on with those plants. So this is going to be a two-parter because it's gonna be really long, like I just mentioned, because we're gonna be talking about more plants than normal, not just broad looks at the garden. We're gonna be getting more in depth, some more detail into the plants that y'all haven't seen in a while. And I have a wasp situation going on in this section of the yard down there. And I can't go over there, at least not for very long, there are hundreds of them. They're yellow jackets, I should say, and they, they're not happy when people go over there. There's a professional who's gonna come out and handle it. We'll talk about all that later. Seemed like an opportune time though, since I'm only gonna be able to cover this half of the garden from like here and over to just split up into two parts. Hope that's okay, because that's what I gotta do. And I'm going to try my best to make sure to include as many houseplants and tropicals and keep that up with everything and not just focus so much on the garden. I'm gonna try and keep it even, but you know what I mean. I don't mind it being a two-parter because whenever I release a garden tour, whenever I film one and get it uploaded, I remember so many things that I forgot to show or talk about. So this will give me a little bit of leeway, a little bit of extra time when I'm done filming to go, oh yeah, I should have talked about that. So even though this is gonna be mostly everything on this side of the patio, meaning the next video after this one will be focusing on everything down here, I'm sure we'll be bouncing back over here to look at more tropicals and more house plants because there will be things that I have forgotten. That's a long enough intro. Let's let's get into it. Finally, time for the September August garden tour. It's September when the video is coming out. Right now, just having a look at what went down in the month of August. The main focus over the last week or two has really been more on maintenance. I haven't done a ton of planting. I'm trying to stay ahead of the game since we're not that far away from when it's going to be time to move the plants inside. So doing all the pest checks, staying on top of fertilizing, pruning out bad foliage, and normal plant care stuff. This is a Cordelin Fruticasa Kiwi, I believe. I don't think this got potted up in a video. Did it. So it's just, it's just a plant. A little bit of sun scorch, but nice low maintenance. Lovely plant with beautiful foliage. Hasn't needed much water. This one's never been on drip or anything, even throughout like the extreme, extreme heat we had back in July. It did just fine. That was a little too close. Look at those leaves. So lovely. Oh, Toby decided to grace us with his presence. Hey, Tobes. How you doing, baby? Over here along the hot tub wall where I got a lot of the tropicals moved and planted up back in May, June, something like that. I've started to do some cicadas. Oh, the cicadas. They get louder the more I talk, I've noticed. The only way to make them shut up is to 
go inside. So that's not going to work with making videos. You just have to push through it. Pardon that background. Okay, that one stopped. Okay. As I was saying, I've been trying to rearrange things over here. I really got into it and I realized that I should probably stop because usually those are things people like to see in videos. So that will just wait until next weekend. But the problem over here has been that, well, it's not a problem. It's a good problem that everything has grown very aggressively, which is what we want with our plants, right? The tall plants, we're shading the smaller plants. The banana just doesn't fit over here. I tried bumping it up onto the stand and then I moved the variegated hibiscus. Did I say variegated? Variegated sea hibiscus up here onto the wall. So it's further back and wouldn't shade things down here quite so much. By shade things, I'm referring to the oh so easy paprika rose just right there. It has been flowering very heavily. That's because of not getting a ton of light because of the giant hibiscus up there right above it. And then the ginger right here. This is the green mountain ginger. See how the growth has been coming out very spindly and elongated this way. It's chasing the sun. And within about, I'd say four days of moving that hibiscus, I finally had a growth that shot right up just how it's supposed to. So that it's a good indicator that everything was not getting enough light and I did the right thing by moving those plants back and now it's just a matter of figuring out what to move where because I'm out of spots for plants. I don't need any more. I'll be buying more but there are going to be perennials to go into the ground. You can see the banana doesn't even fit right here. It's jammed up in there inside the hibiscus so like I said that's not going to work right there. It was just a quick this is something I can do to free up some sunlight for the plants down below. Go figure the day I take the camera out to film the garden tours, the day the hibiscus start dropping all their flowers. I have a beautiful seminal pink hibiscus right here and then an orange one over here. When those are both in bloom at the same time, this spot is just glorious. But unfortunately, when I'm doing a garden tour, this is not when they're going to be in flower. But everything is in very, very heavy bud right now. You can kind of see. See all the buds? Covered in buds, each one of these plants. So, uh, I will try and remember for next week's video to get some shots, show what that looks like because it's very, very, very pretty when those are covered in their flowers, especially at the same time. I love the orange hibiscus with the Supertunia Vista bubblegum coming over the front here. That's basically eating the Akuba that's down below, which I'm actually okay with. It's not shading it too much. It's providing some afternoon relief for the Akuba. So that's working out just fine for it. That's coming out of the deck planters, which you've you can't see. I don't know why I'm trying to unbury them. That's not going to help. There's a gigantic petunia growing over the front. These were planted up. I say these because there's another one that's hidden by the by the monstrous hibiscus. Planted these up with canary wing begonias in the back. Beautiful chartreuse green foliage, red flowers, nice big leaves on them. Some variegated Asclepius cursivaca. Pollinators have been enjoying it. Haven't seen any monarchs on them, which is no surprise at all, but I've been seeing plenty of monarchs or caterpillars on my Asclepius that are planted over in the garden so they're doing okay. I didn't think that the butterflies would be laying their eggs on those but never know. Maybe they'd like something fancy but they didn't which is fine. There are plenty of other spots for them. Back here these are electric blue gecko or these are the electric sapphire. I don't remember. One of those colocasias from Brian's Botanicals they have a metallic -y hue on their foliage and it changes throughout the day depending on what the lighting's like, the angle of the sun. Right now it's just looking pretty black. You can sort of see some hints of blue in there. More so in the afternoon, there is a really nice blue metallic -y sheen on these leaves. And it just opened up a gigantic leaf back here. See it? Got a nice big hole in it. Not a cool looking plant. It's supposed to be an improved version of this plant, which I would believe. Because when I've grown them in the past, I didn't usually get leaves quite this big on them. And there's still plenty of growing left for this plant to do. That opened up this leaf right here, which I imagine will probably be even bigger than that one and not too terribly long. There there's a, was another one planted over here. There's another deck box over here, but again, didn't plan things out quite right when it comes to the size of the plants in this spot. Variegated red bud back here. Sweetheart, no, Carolina sweetheart, variegated red bud. You can see what that variegation looks like more towards the end of the year. The variegation is supposed to be heaviest in the spring or really just when there's cool or nighttime temperatures. I would imagine that they should color up again nicely here in the next several weeks. This is going to be going over in the ground pretty soon, but hopefully this week actually, depending on the weather, I have to watch the forecast. We forget to talk about the pineapple. There it is. Well past its harvest date, but I left it there because it's cute and it looks nice. Have some of the Supertunia Vista indigos grown over the front. They've been fairly sturdy there. That pot isn't undripped because these are both plants that can take things more on the dry side with the petunia can go 
much, much, much more moist than the pineapple. But with it being a Vista, I figured that I'll be fine sharing those conditions with the pineapple because they tend to be more sturdy. Now that things have cooled, I could pull that. Actually, sorry about all the wobbling. I tripped over the Toby here. I could swap that out for a Calibrac, which would do better, especially that we're having some cooler nighttime temps. That's when they seem to flourish, but, but I like the purple. I think it looks nice, so I'm going to leave it. No reason to mess with something if it ain't broke right. Mr. Freckles. The Freckles Croton, looking good, looking like a snack. My favorite Croton, nice and sturdy, never gives me trouble. Easiest one to overwinter. Hasn't done a ton of growing this year. Maybe put on like, I don't know, four inches, maybe six inches of growth but it is to its mature size. They don't get too much larger than this, so I don't expect much growth out of it at this point. Really, Tobes? Everywhere I try and set the tripod, a dog walks up to it and decides that that's exactly where they want to lay down. That It's doing great. Mr. Freckles, sturdy plant, great foliage, always a good grower. The Green Mountain Ginger. So this is a new one for me this year. There's a weed in there. I will probably be finding some weeds and pulling them. Sometimes I, for some reason, just don't see them until I'm filming videos. I did, for a change, go through the garden and actually pull weeds before I filmed, but I missed them. That's all right, it's part of gardening. This green mountain ginger, this is a form of costus. This one has some fun flowers on it. You can see this inflorescence, this bract is starting to do its thing back here, and here's what they look like as they start going. Flowers come out as these orange trumpets, these orange little pipes for the hummingbirds to drink out of, and they have a nice reddish pink striping on the inside of the lip. They start from down low, and they work their way up towards the top, and they had been flowering very, very, very well, pretty much all season. The reason I got this one, I decided to give it a try. Thanks, Turbo. That's why some of the plants look the way that they look. Actually, there were a few reasons that I decided I wanted to grow this one. One, this is a costus variety that is supposed to start flowering earlier in the season than like the barbaritas or however you pronounce that, the red button ginger. They take longer to get going usually where I live. They have just now started flowering around September. So they have an earlier bloom time. Don't have to wait as long for them to get going. You can see even these short growths down here, they have been flowering abundantly, have flowers down below all over the place. Growth has a fun, somewhat spiral to it. Not that heavy of a spiral, but you can see that fun shape that's on it. And the foliage has this fun color to it. Not really a color, it has a fun mixture of greens and the undersides have a nice tone to them too. And the flowers are orange and pink, long lasting. Pollinators love them. I give this plant an A+. It's done very well. Been a great plant, green mountain ginger. Highly recommend growing it. I have enjoyed it. The Eureka Palm. Look at it, isn't it just looking beautiful? It's looking great, just fantastic. Has lots of yellow in it, which I love to see. It means it's getting the right amount of light. There's some white in there in the crown shaft that makes it just pop. Nice contrast with everything else. It just came in and thinned it out some. I don't like to let this one get too much foliage going on in the middle because that's where the mealybugs like to hang out. So try and keep that clear. I don't do a lot of pruning during the months of June and July when it's hot and wet out here because just open the plant up to risk of fungal infection and disease. I prefer for things to be more on the dry side when I do my pruning. So that's generally a late summer or really fall through winter thing. That's with green growth, right? With brown growth or yellowing growth that's lost most of its green, that can go. I don't worry about that, but pruning out green stuff, I like to make sure that the conditions are safe for it and I only really do it if it's necessary because the more leaves they have, the better they're going to grow, right? The more fronds that is. Mule palm also had a couple fronds cut off. That was purely aesthetic because they kept hitting me in the face and they were starting to die off. So I was like, Those, they can just go. I've had this Eureka palm for so many years and every single year, I'm more and more impressed by it. It's just been an overall fantastic plant. I don't know if it's gonna fit in the garage this winter, but I don't, I'm gonna figure something out. Step back a ways and get a better look at that. It's still kind of hard to tell how big it is. It's probably, I would say, well, let's see. Measured the queen palm when that got repotted a couple of weeks ago and it was 17 and a half feet. And it's in a pot that's 36, no, 30 inches tall, I think. I can't really remember. With the pot, I'm gonna go ahead and say probably 14 feet. Done a lot of growing over the years, but not so much that it's been difficult to keep them. I've had it for a long time. A lot of palm trees, uh, particularly like Alexander palms. The amount of time I've had this palm, if that were the same for the Alexander palm, it would no longer fit in the house. So that's nice. If it were in the ground, it'd be growing a lot faster, but I want it to grow faster, right? Because I want to be able to keep it in a pot so I can have it for many, 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 many years. Such an awesome plant. Eureka palms are one of my favorites. They're really common, but they just have so much going on for them. They put out lots of growth. They're fairly sturdy. That beautiful yellow on them. It's not so about that. I love all the stripes 
that you have on the trunks. Nice smooth trunked palm. And I didn't even, okay, I need to move on. I'm talking about this one for too long. I have it underplanted with a Fiesta Caladi. Okay, all right, dogs. Dogs keep bumping into the tripod, I'm sorry. It's underplanted with a Fiesta Caladium, a canary wing begonia that was just an extra that I had, so I tossed it in there. And then I have the uh, Porophyra in the front, which it's not, it's not looking too good. And I think that, the, well, I don't think, I know that that's because I came in and pruned a lot of the foliage out of this Eureka Palm up here, and it let a lot more light come through that I forgot was shading this plant, but it's going to be okay because there's lots of new growth coming out from the inside in there, so it's fine. Just a little prune, a cutback. That is a very sturdy plant, so I'm not worried about it. I'll just give that a cutback here sometime soon. Actually, you know what? Since we're here, I'm just going to give it the cutback right now because I can guarantee you, once I walk away from the camera, I will have completely forgotten about that. I'm gonna to toss these into some water because I can root these and get them going again, but I wanna make sure they stay hydrated. There we go, that's better. That'll bush out from the inside and look good as new here within just a few weeks. They have really fun pink and purple flowers on them. One of my favorites. I've had that for years. I don't even actually know how long I've had this one. Probably, probably a decade, something like that. Maybe longer, maybe a little bit less. I don't know. I don't remember, but it's been an excellent plant, isn't it? Isn't this like a fun little corner right here with the Fiesta Caladiums, the nice blue of the pot, the canary wing, that Cryptanthus back there, and then the black coral elephant ear. Black coral's always been one of my favorites of the elephant ears, but I gotta say, I think that the electric blue gecko is probably my favorite now because it's more sturdy. They've improved on the variety or sapphire blue. I'll look it up. It will be on the screen, whichever one it is that I have out here, but it's just so much more sturdy and the leaves are so much bigger that I think I will probably go with that one from now on in the future over the black coral. I'm gonna keep the black coral because I've had it for years and it's been a neat plant, fun one to grow. Gosh, this whole spot just looks really cool, doesn't it? With the, all the, diff you know, the, what is it? Colors. I have to decide next year which one I really like better because there's more than just how the plant looks. I also need to see how it does during the winter. The black coral has been very easy to overwinter indoors, but I'll have to wait and see on the other one. I'll bring them in this winter and figure out if it's as sturdy as far as overwintering goes as the black coral. Mule palm. Looking, I mean, it's, here it is. Looking like a beautiful mule palm. Been loving life out here. Trunk is... Nice and girthy, this got repotted. A couple, are you serious, Turbo? This got repotted just a few months ago along with the other one. I have some random Colocasia divisions that I've thrown into the containers just to see what they would do and see where there's some succulents that have fallen down in there and I was like, it's fine. They can stay there, not a big deal. Some heliconias that are still recovering from that hot, hot, dry July that we had. Yeah, pretty burnt up, but I think they'll be okay. This is the Rostrata gave it a big cutback. It actually flowered this year and a storm knocked the plant over and broke the inflorescence off before I got to enjoy it. I had to wait a couple years to get these to flowers, so I wasn't very happy about that. The Dracaena Draco. Keep forgetting to show it. There it is. Looking beautiful. Love that plant. Awesome plant. Fun trunk. Nice leaves. Sturdy and easy to grow. I don't even know where to start over here. There's so much. Oh, and the corn, which I just realized y'all don't even know about because that wasn't a video. This is glass gem corn. You see the ears are starting to swell up there. It's gonna be ready to pick in a few weeks. It's exciting. And that's where that story ends, it's corn. Not much to say until you can actually see it. The Adenidia palm, look at that. So last time we talked about this and it just put out this tiny baby inflorescence right here and it's shooting out another one. I'm not expecting those to really do anything in the next couple of months, but if they do, that'll be fun. If not, no big deal. Overall, it's just a nice indicator that the plants doing well and enjoying life. Everything that this has been underplanted with is doing pretty well. The spring fling caladiums, they've done a ton of growing. Barely got anything out of these last year, just like a leaf here and there. And this year they are just throwing them out left and right. One of my favorites of the caladiums, they just have such cool foliage. Doesn't that look neat? They have that intense green veining with the various shades of red and pink and some white that's in there. They're kind of see-through, which is Sort of gross. I'm surprised that they have held up to the weather as well as they have. The rain and storms haven't really done much damage. Not that I've noticed. The thinness is probably the only thing I don't like is it's actually, it's kind of gross. Sort of fleshy, but don't think about it. That's not a big deal. Heliconia starts that got dropped into this pot in a video several weeks ago. These are the Adrians. This is one of the starts here. It's another one back there. Each one of them has some new growth coming up. Like some nice big growth, actually. You can see that. Two big growths coming out of those. That's not bad since it's only been a month. I also have a flamingo planted over here that I don't have high hopes for, but 
we will see. I have to move back. The sprinklers just turned on over there. The Flamingo, that is one of the Heliconias that I started last winter in the grow space. I started the Flamingos, the uh, Petras, Cotton Candies, and I think one other, perhaps. I'm pretty sure there's one other. The Flamingos didn't start for me, and some of y'all got the Flamingos, messaged me, and said you had the same issue, that they basically just rotted away. I had the same problem with the Flamingos. They went back up on sale. I ordered a couple more, figured it's nice and warm outside. See what happens. Give them another shot. They don't get going. That's okay. I gave them a dip and some fungicide before I planted them up, but now it's just it's a matter of waiting. Hopefully things are still bright and warm enough for them to get going. The gingers, they've been doing great. All the gingers in the entire yard. These are various curcumas planted all over the place. I love them. They find I like when these fill up with water. Hummingbirds, I'm not going to say they enjoy them, but it attracts them. And then they kind of look at it and they go, oh, that's neat. And then they fly away. They don't spend much time with them, but helps draw them in. So that's fun. This is a variegated alocasia macrohyza that got planted up. Well, I think I just put that in there when I did this entire container with the ginger and then this cordolin that's back here and the vinca that's hanging over the front. It was just a tiny little division off of a larger one that I had. I wasn't sure if it was going to do much, but it looks like... It's responding well to being transplanted. It's got a lot of new growth coming out of it. Varying levels of variegation, but that's fine. That's what's to be expected. I'm not going to leave that in there during the winter when this goes off to the greenhouse. I didn't do the thing so far into the video and I forgot to do the thing. I need to just make like a general intro and put it in the front of all the garden tours. St. Louis, Missouri is on 6A, 6B, kind of right on the line here. Anything that's in a pot goes away to a large greenhouse during the winter time, or it goes into my garage, which I've converted into a grow space. It has heaters and a big pool of water to keep things nice and humid. If it's in the ground, like not in a pot, like the Adenity is, but if it's in the ground, it stays in the ground. So that's hopefully will clear up confusion when people, when I talk about winter and things going away, that's what that's about. Like the Adenity, they can't grow here, way too cold. The rest of the plants that are in here have done fairly well. The Vinca that's growing over the front, that was a quick zoom, has been flourishing, but as the angle of the sun has changed, it's the time of year, you know, it's moving into September here, or it is September, not getting as much light as it was, so it's not flowering as heavily, but it's still covering the front of the pot, and that's really all I care about. It'd be nice to have more flowers on it, but it's lush, it's green, it's healthy. That's what matters the most to me. It seems happy. Look at this cordolin. They're beautiful. I think it's a kiwi, but I can't say for sure because there are several types that actually look a lot like the kiwi. So, I don't know. I have another one that looks just like this, and it's going to be the same thing. But, I don't know. The random burrow's tail. Cedum morganianum just hanging there. I don't have a lot of places to hang plants, so that's where that ended up. The tie is looking fantastic. Really doing well this year. It got repotted a couple years ago, which slowed things down uh, about a year and a half. Well, no, almost two years ago, actually. And uh, it really started to take off, I'd say, uh, early summer. Lots of new growth coming up on the inside. So it's putting up more plants from down below. And the foliage is continuing to grow all the way back there. And in fact, it just opened up another leaf that sits... You can't even see it because it's so far back. I'll try and... Can we see? See that? It's huge. That is the biggest leaf this thing has ever put out. And I actually think it probably has the most variegation on it, too. It still has a ways to go before it, you know, opens up all the way and gets firm and the colors come out on it. My tie has never been one that has a ton of variegation on it. So I've tried to give it more light this year, like a lot more light. I mean, a lot more light. This gets full morning sun and in the afternoon it's filtered throughout the rest of the day, but it gets a lot of direct bright light. And I haven't had any damage on it from that. I started to see some dulling of the leaves and I scooted it back. I should say I gave it a scoot back a little bit further into the shade and that seemed to stop any progression from having the leaves burn out from too much light. And it's been putting out new growth left and right, which you can't really see because it's all the way back there, but we get better looks at these things here in several weeks when it's time to pull everything out and get them cleaned up to move inside. I would go back there, but the sprinklers are on. Oh, and I added a Rapidophora to the container just because I had it. I do not really know what else to do with it. And I was like, I think these would cohab just fine together. This is not going to choke the monster out. So I put that in there. Uh, and I actually, I had some leftover, like, broken pieces from one of my pink princess philodendrons. I jammed down in there, too, because they all like things more on the dry side. I figured I'd toss them all together, see how they do. So far, they've been doing well. The Metanella had some damage in July. Things were really dry and really hot, but that hasn't stopped it. It's been growing like crazy. Look at all that growth. 
that's back on the inside has new flowers opening up. Isn't it beautiful? Such fun flowers. There's more down here on the inside and there's even new growth starting to branch out from the stems. You can see in here, kind of, right there. There we go. Starting to get this to have more of that small tree look that I like to see with these. It's starting to move in that direction, which is exciting. I have the variegated bird's nest fern back here just hanging out on top of the fountain and it has done very well right here. Seems to like this spot, so I haven't been moving. It's been putting out new growth and just being happy, which is nice because these are not the same as regular bird's nest fern. They're uh, more temperamental, more tricky. So I'm happy to see that it seems happy. This is just, it's a plant someone gave to me because it was dying and I was like, sure, I'll take it. And I just set it on there. It seems to be doing fine. The pinstripe calathea, looking nice. Need to prune out the dead stuff. It had almost nothing on it except for dried up dead leaves when they gave it to me. And having it sit on top of some water seems to have done the trick. They like that moisture, don't they? Same thing with the stromanthes, trio stars. That's why they're down there, right next to the splatter from the fountain, which doesn't splatter that much, but enough that it seems to keep them happy. Also, what's going on with the Calathea yellow fusion that is getting too much water. I see that now, that's too much water, so I need to, we're gonna find a different spot to put that. See the more pale dying off spots on the leaves? That's probably from this plant sitting where the water's just constantly hitting it, so get that moved to a spot where the water is not hitting it as directly. I'll probably just scoot it forward. We kind of like it is now, but maybe in a more tidy manner so that that won't keep happening. It's been doing fine since the repot though. Everything over here. Oh, there's so much. I need to, need to recenter my brain. Oh, hold on. Before I even go over there, look what I just noticed. Have you, excuse me, pardon me. Hello. Hi, Toby. You can get around you, baby. Is that going to show on camera? Do you see what's going on up inside this pine tree? Try and hold the camera up high so the sprinklers can't get to it. I'm gonna pull it up there. Can we see it? I can't tell. I'm holding the tripod up above my head. It's growing all the way up inside that tree. You see that? And I don't see where it's starting down below. Oh, there's a big weed that I missed. It's, it's okay. Get it up before it starts to flower. It's all right. There are trumpet vines growing up along all the trees, which I'm fine with. They're native. And uh, now there's apparently a uh, lace vine or some sort of clematis that's, it's going way up there. I don't think I can even show you how high up into the tree this thing's going. Do you see that? How have I not noticed that? I walk around my garden every day and pay attention. I swear I pay attention. It didn't have flowers on it, so I didn't notice it. So that's going to have to go immediately. I need to find out where that's starting down on the ground and get that out of there. That is, I have been calling it a silver lace vine. They're all over the place out here. It's whatever it is, it's a weed. I've tried to look it up. It doesn't appear to be a native. Actually, the closest thing I can find to it is a sweet autumn clematis, which I've never planted out here, but they are everywhere. And I'm constantly pulling them and plucking them. And I just, well, clearly I, looks like I missed a spot. Oops, it's very pretty. I don't want to let that go to seed and it smells nice, but no, that can't stay here. It's got to go. Um, when I was in this corner, I forgot to talk about these two little, see these gingers? And that green pot and that green pot? This is clearance gingers that I picked up and I probably shouldn't have. They're just little alpinias or umbuts. I got them because they were like two bucks or something and <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to do with them. So here they sit. I should not have bought those. On to some more lush and green things over here. This section, I am a big fan of this here. Change things up didn't go as tropical with this spot. There are tropical big broadleaf plants all over the entire garden. I just wanted a lot of color right here, a low maintenance and cheap color, which was, that was the whole point <laughs> with the impatience in the front of these bamboo planters on each side of this larger planter here. The, what are you, Alyssum, Snow Princess Lobularia. It's out of flower right now. I gave this a cut back about three, maybe four weeks ago and it started to flush back out and it's just now in bud getting ready to put on a show. Of course, not while I'm filming the video. That would have been nice. Maybe in a few days, I'll do updates in the next weekend's vlog. This planter though, I mean, just, isn't it beautiful? This was done in last week's video, all different zinnias in here. Well, they're not that different. They're all Magellan mix. One correction I did need to make that I didn't realize until I was editing the video is that this zinnia over here is a cherry, I think is what it was called. And then this one over here is just a pink. Both of the Magellan mix. And I think I said they were both pink. When I was at the nursery, I was looking at these things. I had them side by side and I was like, I don't think these are the same, but they were the closest, this one and that one, to being the same shade of pink that I could find. So I got them both and 
they're clearly not the same. This one has those nice, big, just pretty typical pink zinnia flowers, whereas these over here have all these fun little uh, semi-opened petals that you get in the front. Isn't that a cool looking flower? Love it. I like the Magellan mix. It's a very standard zinnia. There are lots of fun ones to grow, but this one is just a tried and true. One thing I always have to stay on top of with zinnias is remembering to come in and prune right when you start to see any yellowing inside those flowers to come in with some snippers and get those out. I prefer to snip and not use my fingers, but I'm here, so just gonna use my fingers and should probably be cutting them from down below, but these have been pinched nicely, so each one of these grows has more stalks coming out the sides, more stems coming out the sides, is what I was trying to say, so I don't wanna cut them down too low. Just wanna pull the flowers off, keep them looking fresh and pretty. Does that look nice? So much color. And then just behind those, they are planted up with Violet Cascade Budleas, which they're not actually planted, they're just sitting in their containers. Same things with these Echabekias that are in front of those, they're just in their containers. Those will go in the ground this fall for right now, they're over here where I can enjoy them. On the patio, Ping Pong Gumfrina in the front. I really loved this color pairing, especially when this Budlea was still fully in flower just a week ago. Things can change a lot in a week. A lot of the flowers are going out on this, but it's okay because it also has lots of new buds coming out on it. So I'll come in, prune out the dry stuff and let it push out the new growth. Echabekia does seem to be happy here. The Gomfrina has, it's only been a week and it's actually done a good amount of growing. Lots of new stuff coming out from the inside. Also something I've noticed with this Gomfrina is it's not bothering my nose as much as others that I've grown. Maybe it's just me, it might just, be me and my weird snooter, but I feel like gomfrinas sometimes can be somewhat stinky. They can have a pungent odor to them, at least when you get up close to them. And I do get up close to these a lot because there's a lot of fragrance in this container. I like to come over and have a nice whiff of the flowers during the day. These don't do that. I haven't been getting that nasty odor from them, but I'll give it time. Maybe they'll get stinky later. I don't know. Containers only been together for just over a week, but I absolutely love it. Smells nice, lots of color. It's just bright and cheery and happy. There's a hint of fall in there with the Echabekias. The Zinnias, I feel like I can go either way on those, whether they're a fall plant or not. There's some yellow and orange in there just to carry it through into the fall time. This plant will be gone mid-October because <laughs> this does not fit in the house, obviously. That'll be off at the greenhouse. And so that's why I just have the butterfly bushes and the Echabekias just sitting in there. Same thing with the cannas, those will all go in the ground in the fall time. You can typically plant things in ground here until mid to late November. That takes a long time for the ground to cool off. As long as the ground temperatures are above 50, I'm usually fine with putting perennials in the ground. And sometimes I'll even let it go cooler than that, depending on what the plant is. There's plenty of time to get those in the ground. I had mentioned when I planted this up that I was going to have to keep an eye on the sun because I just wasn't certain if it was going to be enough for the Budleas back here for these Violet Cascade Butterfly Bushes, but so far, it's been fine. It's only been a week, but one of my concerns was just that it wouldn't be quite bright enough and that it would be too moist. If these were planted in the container with the drip that's trying to keep this gigantic palm tree hydrated, they would rot. They would rot very, very, very quickly. I don't see them lasting long with the amount of water that goes into this container for the palm tree. That's another reason those in the Echabekias are not planted in there. They're just sitting there. So far, seems okay. Temperatures are cooling this time of year. If it were June, wouldn't do this too hot. You know, the month of July was absolutely awful here as far as the heat's concerned, but uh, that's that's not a problem right now. And what else is going on over here? Here's the other mule palm hanging out by the shower. It has finally opened up that spear that's in the middle. If you watch the video when I repotted this palm tree, one of the things I talked about was that I knew it was time to repot it because it had been holding on to a spear in the center. Spear being new growth what we call them in palm trees, the piece that's coming out the middle. You can see this one right here, right there, that's a spear. It had been holding on to the same one for a year, almost a year, not quite. So that's when, you know, okay, this plant needs some more soil, not getting the nutrients that it needs. So I repotted it and it's opened up one, two, I think three new fronds since then. So it's responded well. Yes, there's, there's shampoo and moisturizer sitting over there. The chlorine, it dries out my skin. So I got some stuff that's like natural and shouldn't hurt the environment. So just you have a quick rinse out here. That's, I could do better, I know, but that's just where it ended up. It's fine, don't worry about it. I have a lime zinger, Xanthosoma, planted in the front of this container. This pot right here, hmm, oh, where do I start with this? What I decided to do with this container this year, for this mule palm container, it's a little bit different than what I've done in the past. 
Minus, this is just sitting here. This is another flamingo that's it's because I needed a drip head. So that's where that ended up so that it stays nice and moist. I put plants in here that are typically zone eight hardy because every single year the Tradescantia, you can see right there, Tradescantia pellita, purple heart plant, comes back every single year. And had this been repotted sooner, I'm sure it would be much, much, much larger. I leave these mule palms out here in the backyard until temperatures are generally around like 15 to 13. That's about as cold as I've let them go. I'm talking about Fahrenheit. And uh, these have always come back. So I was like, maybe I should try some other zone eight plants and just see what happens. The Xanthosoma line zinger, they're listed as zone eight and up. Some websites say zone 10, so I don't know. But I had a whole bunch of them that I got for really cheap. So I tossed one of those in there and I have some tiny little artichoke starts in there, which it's not an appropriate place to put them, but I figured I had a couple of them. We'll see what they do. Toss those in there. They're not going to do anything this year. Hopefully they'll just spend most of their time putting out roots and get something out of them next year. And then I, you can probably see it, right? The star of the show over here. Look at it. It's so pretty. Isn't it awesome? Even with the background of the shower right behind it. This is a Bangrai Red Curcuma. One of the hidden cone gingers. Been a neat plant. I love growing curcumas. I almost lost this one last winter. So my curcumas, my caladiums, anything that I overwinter as a dormant bulb or corm, rhizome, anything that just needs to be dormant, I've always just kept in my garage on the cold side, meaning outside of where I have the area wrapped in plastic where it's not heated. I have an area wrapped in plastic for the... It's a long story. Well, I upgraded to an industrial heater for the garage last winter, if you remember. So there's no longer an area wrapped in plastic to hold the heat in. The entire garage stays between 77 and 84. That's where I keep it. And that, that, that doesn't really work for keeping dormant plants. And I just totally forgot about that. I had crates full of bulbs from different caladiums, the banana cannas, some alocasias that I was storing dormant. And I almost lost everything because it was just too warm. They weren't dormant. This one decided it wanted to start growing back in January when the new heater got installed. It's understandable, things got warm. And so I let it do its thing and then I moved it outside when temperatures were just barely above freezing and it died back. So this has gone through two dormancies in the last several months, which isn't fantastic, but it has had a nice rebound. It's looking good, a nice big inflorescence on there. So I was thinking, since these are typically hardy zone eight, even warmer zone seven, depending on the type of curcuma, the type of hidden cone curcuma that is, typically they'll be okay as long as the ground doesn't freeze. However, that's when they're planted in the ground in areas where it's probably not freezing for very long. This is in a pot. So I don't, my little idea of keeping that in this container to sail it over winter is probably not a great idea. I'm sure I'm gonna chicken out and go ahead and pull it up and I'll just store it in the basement. Or heck, I may end up throwing some things in boxes and keeping them in other people's garages this winter. Things that need to be overwintered, nice and cool and dark. That may be where that ends up because they do need to die back in the winter time to get a nice fresh set out of them. I have a couple other types that are just getting ready to bloom. They're not in bloom yet, but I'll make sure to show those in future videos when they start to bloom. That was a very long story about this curcuma. But the flower on it's so nice, and I've had this one for years and haven't gotten much out of it, so I'm excited to see a nice, healthy flower out of it finally after having gotten it as a tiny, pathetic little bulb that took forever to get established. Now I've got two nice looking growths out of it, and that was after almost losing it and it being shipped as a pathetic, puny little thing. Makes me happy. Same flowering pattern as with that green forest. Have this nice big bract right here, and then the flowers pop out from inside all these little spots, they work their way from the bottom up to the top. See the flowers in there. Fun, neat looking plants. Brassavola orchid hanging up here from the mule paw. This one is North Star Miami. I've had this one for a few years. It's a very large established clump. You can see where most of the growth was coming out that direction. So I hung it so this side would get some more light. I usually get a flush of flowers out of this orchid in the summertime and I haven't gotten anything yet. So that's why I moved it over here where it's getting some more light. I found with a lot of my plants that people go, oh, filtered light, yeah, okay, sure, but sometimes it's not enough, so it's getting more intense light right here, and I have it next to the shower because that way I remember to give it a blast of water almost every single day because things have been more dry, and it seems to be appreciating them, getting lots of new growth out of it. Same to be said for the Bismarckia, have three fronds on it right now, a fourth one opening up, which I know that that's not anything to brag about. Pardon the mess back there, that's like the drainage area. I need to get on top of cleaning that up. But this one, I almost completely lost last winter when it got down to 13 degrees Fahrenheit, which is way too cold for Bismarckia. 
I'm pretty surprised that it even survives. I'm happy that I've gotten three fronds out of it. Another one's coming up. I have this gut instinct that I need to repot it, but I know that I should not. Bismarckias do not like to be repotted. It's a risky thing to do. I want to wait until this one is actually pot bound or approaching pot bound. Pot bound isn't really the word I like to use. We have this mentality with palm trees that they like to be pot bound. There are a lot of plants actually with that saying, right? Calatheas, heliconias, gingers, bird of paradise. And I feel like pot bound isn't the correct terminology. What we should probably be saying is beyond established, right? Or just beyond an established plant. These are plants that like their roots to be very mature. But pot bound, that means it's harder to hydrate the plants, not enough nutrient. That's not the impression I want to give. I think it needs some more time in its container. On that note, this is a cute little pindu. Pindu, pindo, don't care how you say it. It's a butia odorata, not likely a capitata. That's a whole nother conversation. Capitata genes could be in there. I got this one in Florida a few years ago in 2019 and it barely survived the trip home. It was just a tiny little thing, itty bitty little plant when I got it. And then it had crown rot that first winter. And it took a couple years to get it to bounce back from that. You know, 2020, I wasn't doing much with the plant, so it just had to struggle through it. This year I got it moved up into a larger container with a lot of organic material around the roots, lots of palm gain, and it has been getting fertilized with every single watering at a quarter strength. So this gets a quarter strength fertilizer almost every single day. And that has made the difference to get it start pushing out new growth. This has just been a sluggish palm tree, which is not normal for a butia. I've grown lots of butias before. They're usually very vigorous, more so in the ground. When you have them in pots, you just can't expect them to grow as quickly. But that seems to have been working. I've been calling this one Fernando because it's very juiced up. There's always something being added into that soil, necessary things to help get it moving. And that has worked. Finally getting some nice new growth at, not just new growth, but nice sturdy growth. You can see last year's winter damage on there. I'm not going to leave this out to the same kind of cold as I have in the past. I'd like it to get larger and more established before letting it deal with more cold. The bigger they are, the more cold they can take in this one, it's still a baby. New leaf coming out here on the bipinatifidum that got repotted in a video, I don't know, several weeks ago, not too terribly long ago. Nice deep green, which is what I wanted to see. I knew this one needed to be repotted for lots of reasons. One, because the foliage was coming out pretty small. They should have nice big leaves on them, especially when they're larger, more established plants, which you can't really tell because the fronds are in the way. But this is a larger plant, should have bigger leaves on it. Needed a fresh mix and it's responding well to it. Seems to be happy. The Dracaena reflexa hanging out over here in the corner, far away from the irrigation. It's a sturdy plant. They can take the heat, they can take the dry. So this is where I've put it. It's a good plant to have over here in my repotting corner. I don't know why I made this my spot to repot plants. It's the dumbest place to be doing this. There are other areas that are closer to the edge of the patio where the soil will wash away more clearly or more easily. And this, for some reason I went with right here. I don't know, but it's been working out. I have a different area that I'm going to be doing a full on makeover with here in a week or two. It's going to be a video coming up soon that's going to probably become my new repotting area that's not even on the patio. It's an area that I used to grow vegetables and all sorts of things in, but it doesn't get the sun for that anymore. And I think it would be a better spot for this sort of mayhem. I don't like looking at this. I don't like this being out in the open on the patio, but I don't really have a hidden place to put it. People are always suggesting that I get a potting shed and greenhouses, and while I would love that, that would be fantastic. Unfortunately, I have an HOA and those things are not allowed. So for now, those are just over there. Edinidia planters, look at them, aren't they looking great? So much color and vigor. The variegated sun and patience, I almost said sun and portions. The electric orange variegated sun and patience, they, uh, didn't really start to do anything until really like a week or two ago. They were really slow to get going. I think that's because they got eaten by the sweet potato vines, which happens. You know, sweet potato vines will be vigorous, got to stay on top of prunum so they don't eat your plants. And I just, I don't know, I guess I didn't get it done in time on the other end. But over here, the orange is starting to do its thing and show through. The variegated sun impatience just tend to not be as vigorous as the regular varieties. Well, hold on, they can be. I've noticed they require a lot more ample feeding to keep them moving, which isn't something you really should have to deal with when it comes to impatience, but the variegated tropical rose, which is this one right here, and the orange, 
until I started feeding every other day, I'd do a quarter to a half strength liquid fertilizer. I started that in August. Prior to that, I was just fertilizing once a week to every other week. When I bumped it up to every other day, I started to get a lot more growth out of them, which is what you would expect, but it's not what you should need with an impatient, right? But is what it is. I'm happy that they're growing. It's fine. The fertilizer is beneficial for the palm trees. I wanted to get a lot of growth out of these edinities before winter shows up. I can see there's a frond in here that I could maybe now. I was gonna say I can cut this out, but I'm not going to just yet. It's yellowing up higher. You can see that up there, but well, they're still green in there. I like to leave them so that can stay for now. I potted both of these containers up with Supertunia Vista raspberries. The name just popped right out of my head. It's a common one, so I don't know why all of a sudden I've forgotten which one they were. I think that's what it was, the raspberries. There were Supertunia honeys in here as well, but I didn't have high hopes for those because they just are not very vigorous and they tend to get choked out and die after the summer heat. But one of them, you can see right here, it, it did okay growing all the way down there to the bottom and it's held up better with the mix of the jazzberries. Supertunia Vista jazzberries. That's what those are. Look at that. So much color. Isn't that fun? I love getting the orange, the pinks, and the purples together. They look nice. Very tropical. Very summery. Lush, healthy, and vigorous. The view of both of these planters has been so nice from inside the pool when you're swimming, looking up and seeing all that color. The green from the sweet potato vines and the palm fronds with all the flowers it's just nice to look at and the adenidias they've done a good amount of growing this one right here it's probably put on a good six inches or so of trunk this one over here about the same can i pull this yet can i get that off of there no not yet it's tempting but i'll wait i like to pull those off but you shouldn't do it until they're ready to pop off easily these are by far my favorite containers i've done out here unfortunately those sun impatience just weren't some of them were though like look at this one see what i'm talking about isn't that awful glad that I have a spot where I can move all that stuff here in a couple of weeks. Have such a beautiful planter with that right next to it. I mean, just, you gotta do what you gotta do. Needed a place for repotting, but that that's not ideal right there. See that tropical rose sun impatient looking fantastic. And then you come over here and they're like, meh, not so much. They were all planted at the same size, same soil, same fertilizer, everything. You can see this variegated sun impatient, this orange one looking great looking pretty good it has more of a weeping habit which is unusual doesn't make a lot of sense but i'll take it and then over here barely got anything out of them there are some differences in sunlight so that's something to take into account i've tried to rotate the pots every other week but they're big pots so that they get more of like a quarter rotation so that maybe that was a problem maybe i needed to give them a full 180 every other week to make sure that they were getting proper lighting on both sides i don't know it doesn't matter they're pretty they came out fine they've been a lot of fun to look at so much color. Okay, let's take a break from the potted plants and the house plants and the tropicals and look at the garden beds. There's a lot to talk about in here, but I can't get too close to anything because the wasp situation has gotten absolutely out of control. I'll talk about that more when I get down over in that area. So this bed over here, which is full of my favorite gingers, the flaming torches, which of course have just gone out of flower when it's time to film the video. There'll be lots of new flowers coming up. So again, I'll be sure to show them in future videos as things progress throughout the season. There's, these should have flowers on them all the way into October. They did have a very big show of flowers on them. Beautiful orange flowers. These bracts right here are pretty big. This is one of the smaller ones. Some of them look like they push 18 inches around the corner that you'll see here in a moment. This clump has really done a lot of growing. Remember this got divided up a few years ago, so there wasn't much to it last year. And I was disappointed because I liked the show that they put on, but it needed to be divided up and that did good for the plant. I think that it's come back more lush and healthy. It was starting to get sort of a choked out look to it. Looking better now, all the transplants that you'll see here in a moment are looking fantastic. Seems like about every five years or so I've had to divide these up. That seems to be the sweet spot. And then the flowers lull for a year. Well, they don't lull, they still flower. It's just you don't have as many growth points to get flowers out of. That's all that is. It's just, you know, plants. They take some patience. That's all. And now they're looking great again. At a Nidia palm, which got repotted a few weeks ago. Done a lot of repots this year. It's fine. It, it was, had a rough time with that repot, but it is doing great. It's shooting out some new foliage, which is really hard to see. It's rebounding just fine from the repot. I was a little bit concerned because it was a difficult repot, but it's held up just fine. I planted some of the Leibenzinger xanthosomas in this container, two of the larger ones. So these were the ones that came in 
much bigger from Hertz Gardens. If you watch that video where I was comparing the different sizes, larger plants than the other tiny little lime zinger that you saw underneath the mule palm that was over there that was an itty bitty little thing. That was from Wellspring. These from Hertz, look at that. Just a few weeks, all this new growth out of them. Lime zinger, one of my favorites. Gonna be seeing a lot more of these in the garden over the next few years. This is nothing. These are just babies. When these get nice and large, they have those fun arrow-shaped leaves on them and that great limey green color. Pretty versatile too. They can take a good amount of sun and part sun they seem to be just fine and just as happy as when they're getting a lot of sun. In fact, they seem to prefer a little bit less light than I figured they would. The a bulletin. I, I don't like it. I planted this, well, I potted it, put it in a pot back here thinking that it would look really neat being able to see all those little dangly lantern bulletin flowers through that window and it's not getting the light to actually open the flowers. It puts out plenty of buds, but it's got really long gangly growth on it because the sun has shifted, which I've talked about, so things are not as bright and intense over here as they were. And to me, it just, it looks pretty weedy. Not really a fan of that anymore, so I'm probably going to pull this out, give it a big cut back, stick it in the spot where it'll get more sun and either drop something else in that spot or just leave it. I don't have to have something planted over there. Just fine having it wide open. It's done plenty of growing though. I mean, look at that. It has a, it has a branch growing all the way up there to the roof. It's a very healthy plant, just not quite enough light to keep it flowering and I would like it to be more compact. Just need to give it some more light and that will start to uh, make it more bushy. The front of this garden bed, back to talking about those variegated sun impatience. Since I upped my feeding game, getting more growth out of them, but it's too late. <laughs> you see how much shade there is over here? I'm not gonna be seeing much out of these at this point, especially now that these gingers, which do have some heat damage on them from back in July, but they are, would be a ton. Look at all those weeds that I missed. I pulled weeds before the video. You're welcome. I, could, I missed a whole bunch because I didn't, didn't lift this up. Anyways, this would be full of those beautiful variegated sun impatience. They're in there. It's just not enough light anymore at this point of the year. It's fine. We'll take a mulligan on that one. Try again next year with something that's not variegated. Those have always done fine over here and gotten a lot of growth out of them or do the same thing. Just remember that I have to fertilize them like three times a week, which I prefer to not do that. This one over here is doing really well. I mean, really well in comparison to the others. I think that's just because it's getting more light. So maybe this is what I would have expected to see had I started the fertilizing earlier with the rest of them. I don't know. I'm not really bummed about it. It was an experiment. Didn't work out and that's fine. I am very happy with how the Tradescantia have done in here. These are Tradescantia nanooks. They were just tiny little starts when I put them in the ground. They're so vigorous and lush. They might overwinter. We will see the Palitas do overwinter. You can see there are some down in here. As long as there's a good mulch in this spot, they usually come back for me. The Nanooks, I don't know, we will see. I've seen people in zone 7B and 8 who've been able to grow these as perennials. I figure I'll give it a try. I'll give them a big cut back and get a whole bunch of pieces started to carry through the winter and replant if it doesn't work out. And if, that way, if they don't come back, I have new ones to put in the ground. If they do come back, then great. I just have more Tradescantia to grow. These will just keep getting bigger. And I don't normally prune on the gingers when they're done flowering. So you want to let them reabsorb everything and keep building up a healthy rhizome system down below. But I will probably come in here and at least cut back these growths right here because they really are shading things an awful lot. And I feel like if that wasn't there, then that would probably allow some more vigor in here because we still have a couple months really that I should be able to have the spot looking nice before it gets cold. So I should probably do something about that. I do enjoy the way the growth looks though. When it swoops over everything, it's one of the things I like so much about the Hedichiums and the Zingiberts. I really like that angled growth habit that they have. But I would prefer it be up higher so some more light can get through down below. In fact, you know, I'll go ahead and grab my snippers and give that a cut, see how it looks. So I'll leave that so some light can still get in there. There's still some foliage that has the chlorophyll in it to help get the energy down there into the plant, but maybe just opening this spot up will help the plants that are down below. Yeah, look at how much that opened things up. So everything that was in there was getting so much shade that it wasn't going to help them grow. Normally, I will always put the perennial before the annuals, but I would like for these to do their thing and those stalks had already done their thing, so may as well cut them back, right? That and the flaming torch is such a sturdy one. Cutting a few stalks off, it's not going to hurt it at all. 
And now I can see where the weeds are <laughs> that I missed. I can go in there and get those pulled out too. One thing that I thought was really neat that I hadn't noticed until after the last garden tour, otherwise I would have mentioned it then, so otherwise I would have shown this then, so we would have been able to see the change in growth. You see this right here? I thought it was a weed for a little while, and then I remembered, oh no, no, that's a Rulia. I planted one of the Mucho Morado, or Macho Morado, Rulias from Proven Winners in this spot last year, which is a zone seven, might be a zone eight. I can't remember how, what they have it listed as. But I put that in that spot just sort of out of curiosity, whether or not it would overwinter, and it did came back just fine, which isn't surprising. The spot's pretty warm. There's a lot of mulch here, hence why the gingers back there do okay here in zone six. And not enough light to get them flowering though. So hopefully opening this space up is going to allow some more light to come in there. That didn't. That's a bikini teeny. They're everywhere. I, I pull them up without any hesitation. Yeah. I think that opened things up nicely. So hopefully get to see some more growth. Uh, the Tretiscantia, maybe the Impatience as well. I mean, I'm sure they'll do some growing, but not expecting to see much. This right here, I don't know what it is. No idea. Can't remember. Planted this several years ago from Brian's Botanicals, and it has been a plant that usually only puts up like two leaves a year. They don't shoot up until around July. And uh, I, I, it's, no, it's been so long, I don't remember what it is. This year it's doing a lot more growing, and I think that that's because it's been getting more shade. Spot's not getting the same sun as it used to with the pine trees behind me being taller, so... Whatever it was, it did not like the afternoon sun. So good to know. I want to say it was some sort of pelata or peltata, maybe. An aeroid of some sort. I wish I could remember the name. It's not on their website anymore, so I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. If you know, let me know. The leaves are very large. Without flowers, it being an aeroid, I'm not going to try and take any guesses any further than I already have. It's just... It's neat looking, whatever it is. So I need flowers to make an identification though. The Orangita pumpkin, I thought it was a goner, but it's actually just started taking off. Got some flowers on it, even some tiny little pumps starting to push out. So that's a nice surprise. Not expecting much from it, but that's okay. Look at the bajus. Big, lush, healthy bajus. The sable miners over here, you can't really see them. The dwarf blue stem palmettos that are in there, they're, they're hanging out. Doing okay. Crinum lilies, they're having their, it's not really dieback time, but it's just the time of year where they start to get somewhat sad looking. They did a lot of flowering. Over here, this is actually where I'm going to start to wrap things up, but I wanted to make sure I give a look at what's going on with the gingers. See how full and lush they are? So when we were inside looking through the window that was out right there, when every single one of these had flowers on it, it was just breathtaking absolutely beautiful so much growth out of everything in this spot this year i'll go into more detail in the next video in part two i can't go any further than this because of the wasp situation like you'll notice that nets and things are just all over the place i was going to try and have that all cleaned up for the garden tour there are multiple yellow jacket nests in the ground over here the other day i was walking around over in this spot, go over, I'm gonna keep my distance on the other side of the gate. So right over here, there's just hundreds of them flying around over there and they got me good. The sting, not so bad. Turns out not allergic, so good to know. But that has to be handled by a professional. There's a lot over there and there are a couple more nests of them over there. And I mean, I don't like to mess with nature. They're doing their thing. I just, I, but I can't get into the garden beds and do anything when I'm getting swarmed by wasps. I had tons of yellow jackets swarm me. I had to jump in the pool to get away from them. That's really, I just, I shouldn't even be over here, probably, but I'm not allergic. And the sting wasn't that bad. Hurt a little bit, then it itched for a little while, and that was that. But you know, you can develop the allergies at any point in life, and sometimes you get stung enough, then that can cause reaction. Someone's coming out here to handle that in a couple of days, and then I will finish the other half of the yard and lots of other things with some house plants that I hadn't been able to cover yet. Here's a little glimpse of things and how they're doing. Get better looks at them next week though. I do, I really, I, well, I wanna talk about the pumpkins. There's so many pumpkins in here. There's your preview. Lots to look at in there. Well, thanks for hanging out. It's been fun walking around, looking at the plants. I figured this is the best time to do a two-parter video if I'm going to try and talk about all of the house plants 
and the garden at the same time. I tend to glaze over the house plants during the summertime, which I realize isn't fair to everybody who gets into the videos during the winter when it's so house plant focused because it's winter, we're inside. But once I have them outside and they're repotted and they're up on drip, I just kind of set them and let them do their thing, maintain them. But there just isn't usually much to say. And because I went months without talking about most of them, made things take longer. But since I can't really do anything over there, at least not safely, good timing to split the video up. I'm sure this was plenty long as it is. I look forward to showing y'all what's left. Comment down below, say hi, what's going on in your gardens? Hopefully the weather's nice in September, so things should be very pleasant outside. I'm sure lots of people have some fun home remedies on how to get rid of the wasps. You can leave them down below. I'm not gonna do it. I'm having a professional handle that. I'm not getting involved in that mess. Absolutely no way, no how. I talked to my dad and he said, pour gasoline in the hole. What? I'm like, yeah, that's what we did back in the day. Pour gasoline in the hole, set it on fire. Uh, no. Fun excuse to play with fire, but I don't want gasoline in the ground. One, just for the environment. Don't think you're supposed to do that. And I would never be able to plant things in that area again and have them look nice. I think he was probably just playing a joke on me. But it would not shock me if there was a fair amount of truth behind it. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.